Each year, billions of dollars are being stolen, and the weapon the thief holds in his hand isn't a gun, it's a telephone. Technology has led to a new type of phone scam. This isn't just a case of someone stealing your calling card. This scam is so sophisticated, it goes right into the telephone computer system. Peter Van Sant reports on how the scam artists are picking up the phone, but their victims are picking up the tab. A typical night in downtown Los Angeles. The streets are full of people, many of them immigrants, lining up at phone booths to call friends and family far away. See, you want to call Puerto Rico? Yes. Follow me. You may not realize it, but you're witnessing a scam that rips off billions of dollars every year. Telefono? Telephone number? 809. The man taking these undercover videos works for street stories. What you see happening here and in cities across America is telephone fraud. Hustlers, known as call cell operators, sell stolen long distance phone time to people on the streets. How much do I owe you? Ten dollars. Okay, gracias. Si. The telephone companies estimate that phone fraud tops $4 billion a year. But don't feel sorry for them. They're not the ones getting stuck with the bills. The victims are. Companies like Alexa. It's the only crime I know of where the victim is held financially liable for the damages. David McCarty is the president of Alexa, a small biomedical company near San Jose, California. Uh, this is the R&D laboratory. One day last year, David was stunned to learn that people in New York were somehow tapping into his company's phone system and making thousands of calls all over the world on his lines. We got a, uh, a phone bill and we looked at $40,000. You know, how can this be? That was just the beginning. After Alexon reported the phone fraud to AT&T, who supplied the long distance lines, and to Pacific Bell, who provided the local service and equipment, the phone companies were unable to stop the unauthorized calls for another month. In fact, $40,000 was just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, it turns out that we, we wound up with a $233,000 phone bill before we were able to stop uh, this crime from being committed. Because David McCarty's problem started last year when Alexon purchased a business phone system from Pacific Bell. Customers called in orders on an AT&T 800 number. We have everything uh, we need to ship the products out to you. Okay. okay. So we called up AT&T, Pac Bell, and said we didn't call all these places in South America, Central America. They said, oh, you're you know, a victim of remote access fraud. And that's what's the first that? Yeah, what's that? It's the first time I'd really ever even heard of the term. McCarty and his office manager, Brandy McGill, say that when they bought the system, no one from the phone companies even hinted that security and fraud might be major problems. And even at the point of talking to them, the experts on the equipment, no one said anything about danger. No one ever mentioned danger. They don't make you pay for this, right? Well, that's what I thought. Even though they were the ones that were, the, were in charge of putting the blocks on the system, they're saying that I'm responsible for the bills that occurred after I notified them. Well, and what do you think of that? I think it stinks. Companies have to realize that a telephone system is not unlike any other kind of asset or equipment they have. It's like a safe. It's like, it's like their company fleet of cars. It's like their office furniture. They have to keep it safeguarded. Bob Nersessian is a phone fraud specialist with AT&T who thinks it's right that companies like Alexon should be responsible for the bills. It seems to me that this is about the only crime that I'm aware of the victim has to pay. The victim is the one who pays. It doesn't seem right. Unfortunately, the victim, the customer, is in the best position to prevent it. It's a series of steps that have to be taken. It's a combination. Take some education. Learn what the hackers are trying to do. Make sure you've got the right systems in place to, to put a lock on your door, if you will. Okay? Be vigilant. How is that possible, though, when they don't know how a phone system works. Well, and, and these phone systems are marketed mm -hmm. where call us, it'll just be plug in your phone and, mm -hmm. and off you go. What I can tell you is that AT&T, uh, we don't market systems that, that allow a, a hacker to penetrate them. 
easiest is going into a store and buying a piece of candy. These two teenagers are about to show you just how simple it is to penetrate an AT&T system. This is Alan and his partner Bob. They're in the illegal business of breaking into the phone systems of companies like Alexon. They ask us to disguise their faces and alter their voices. Is it tough to get into a company's phone system? I call a number and I get your computers. And then from that computer, I just own the whole, com the whole phone system. And then I could call into, into a number and get your dial tone and then call out from your dial tone. How long does this take you to do? Five minutes. See what we've got. Right there is a list of all carriers that we found. We asked Bob to show us how easy it is to break into telephone systems, which allows them access to the long distance lines. Like, listen. That is a modem carrier, and we've just connected to it. You're in someone's phone system right yeah. now? Yes. See, this is a private system. So, right now, in just the last really about minute, you're on the verge of breaking into at and system. Yeah, it's not easy. In other words, you could use their phone system to make calls anywhere in the world? And make it. And I could sell it. Reach out and freak someone. Elapsed time, less than four minutes. And keep in mind, these teens claim they infiltrate hundreds of different phone systems every year. And they're not alone. There are hundreds of phone hackers like them across the country who steal telephone codes. It's a booming business. Once you get these numbers, what do you do with them? Sell them. Who buys them? People on the street who sells them to normal people to call their home country. What do you charge your customers for these numbers? Uh, for 10 numbers, 2,000. Once the hackers get the telephone codes, it's just a matter of minutes before they're sold here, on the streets, in cities like New York and Los Angeles. This is where the action really begins. Who's making the phone calls? To a large extent, it's people who are recently arrived in the United States. They have friends and relatives and locations overseas, and they don't want to be able to talk to them. Jim Snyder is a fraud investigator with MCI. Today, he's in Los Angeles, watching the illegal call cell operators work the phones. I see it. Usually the way that you can identify a call cell operation is that there are numerous people who are standing at the payphone. There'll be someone, the operator, who will actually sell the telephone calls. He'll dial the numbers, put the person on the phone, and then collect whatever the going rate is, usually $10. See, the one fellow there has a piece of paper in his hand, and he probably has authorization codes that are written on the piece of paper. If you look over on this wall over here, in the bank of payphones there, there's a call cell operation that's going on over there. Highly mobile, and with hundreds of phone booths to use as a base of operations, the call cell criminals are tough to catch. MCI takes another approach, warning its customers when it appears they're being mugged by phone. We've pulled up some data here that seems to indicate that a particular 800 number is being hacked and we Bruce Wells works with Jim Snyder at MCI's headquarters in Washington looking for suspicious calling patterns with computers but here we see that they're dialing a one and then a nine and a whole lot of zeros that tells me that they're probably <clears throat> trying to get to an outbound operator be it a local operator or a long distance company operator this is Bruce Wells from Systems Integrity back in Washington how you doing today uh, we happened to notice that one of your customers was getting whacked on their 800 number this morning. MCI says it notifies up to 50 customers a week that someone has broken into their business phone system. Has anyone ever broken into MCI's phone system? To answer your question, yes. But isn't it true, whether you're MCI or AT&T, that you guys can't guarantee the user that his system won't be broken into? Now, there is no silver bullet, there is no magical cure that's going to prevent this. Which brings us back to Alexon, which still owes $233,000 for a fraud that the telephone companies admit they can't stop. I mean, they've just sort of left us out there twisting in the wind. It's just been an unbelievable lack of customer concern, uh, lack of communications, lack of, of support. Being a startup company, you can't afford to have your customers inconvenienced. Even but how fickle those phone companies are. Why, just last year, Pacific Bell featured Brandy McGill and Alexon 
In a commercial design to sell, we kid you not, the very phone system that started this whole mess. With Pac Bell, you make one phone call, plug it in and it works. <laughs> when all these hassles started, what well, didn't they say to you? Hey, you're the one that was starting our commercial. Don't worry about anything, we'll take care of this. <laughs> Never. In fact, um, uh, there was very little mention of the commercial. And I was very, very disappointed to find out that it hadn't counted for anything. Shortly after Alexon complained about the phone fraud bill, Pacific Bell took the commercial off the air. Everybody passes the button, you get the bill. And we get the bill. Exactly. If it were Pacific Bell's bill, we might look at it differently. It's not Pacific Bell's bill, it's at and bill. So it is not ours to forgive. Yeah, but Judy Peterson is a spokesperson for Pacific Bell. Yeah, but at and says, it's your fault that this occurred because it's your equipment. <laughs> Give me an answer, though. Give me an answer to that. AT&T says, it's your fault. You should pay for it because it was your equipment. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't our equipment. But the equipment has Pacific Bell's logo written right on top and was sold to Alexon by Pacific Bell. It's like buying an automobile and not being told that like a hundred other people have the keys to your car. I think it's ridiculous. I mean, we, we're the victim of a crime and then we have to turn around and pay also. So uh, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Both AT&T and Pacific Bell are threatening to sue Alexon if it doesn't pay that $233,000 bill. David McCarty says if he's forced to pay, it jeopardizes his company's future. Alexon, by the way, has changed long distance companies. So far, the scam has only hit businesses that use certain kinds of telephone systems. If you wonder whether your business is at risk, experts say the answer is as close as your phone. Just call your local phone company. Next, we make a call of our own and visit a woman about to make history, Maya Angelou.